building your own generic classes. So I've showed you how to use, you know, hash map and a hash set, which are generic classes, you know, like which you use like an you know, array list of string string. If they have these you know parameters you can pass. And so now we're gonna build our own uh, parameterized generic class. And uh, the way you do that is pretty easy. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build something. I'm calling it two set. So two set is just like a set. Remember, a set can only have uh, one copy of every object. In a two set, you can have up to two copies of every object. So let's do that. We're going to hit here for a new class. It's going to be called two set. And then you say less than and t greater than, greater than right? Uh, t could be really anything, any variable. It could be the word type or, you know, whatever you want. Uh, but commonly, we like to use just the capital letter T. So I'm going to hit finish. There it is. There it is. Two set. Now, this is going to need to store all this data and up to two copies. So I cannot use a set. A hash set because the set only stores one copy and I need to keep track of whether there's zero, one, or two copies of every element. So I'm going to use an array list of type T. I'm going to call that data. Is that, uh, I'm just going to leave that there. And uh, I should make this private. Right. So that's my member function. I, of course, need to do the import. Um, there you go. And uh, you, see, you can see I can use the T, the capital letter T, I can use it here. And uh, throughout this whole file, I can use the capital letter T uh, wherever I would use a type, like string or integer. So here I'm using T, and that's fine. So now I need a constructor public to set. And that all it's going to do is it's going to create a new array list of type T. We know elements to start with. So there you go. You can see uh, that, that I can use again the letter T. Like I said, I can use it right here. Uh, you can see also that the constructor 2z does not have this uh, you know T on it. It just says 2z. That's just the way it is. So uh, there we go. Now we have a 2z. And the uh, next thing I would need to do is be able to add data to this. So I'm going to have create an add method. Uh, and I'm going to say and the element I want to add is that. So again, you see I'm using t here where I would use a, a type. And that's fine. And uh, for now, let me just do data dot add the element like that. So that's just going to add the element. I'm not going to check for now for the two, so because I just want to make sure this works, right? So I'm going back here and say two set of integer in this case. TS is a new two set of integer. And uh, whoops, there we go. And then I'm going to say two set dot add. I'm going to add the number seven. T is uh, add number eight. And I'm going to print out T is. I run that. And you see it prints out. Well, it prints out the, the standard reference to an object, which is ugly. I don't want that. Uh, what I need to make that to make that prettier, I just need this to string method. So let's do that. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just going to return data dot to string, right? Okay. And now I can just run this and there we go. It's got a seven and an eight. Uh, and of course, what's going to happen is since I haven't done any logic, this is not really a two set, right? I can add one, two, three elements. And it's going to say seven, 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 eight. That's not good. So, well, that's not what I wanted, but it is working. You see, it's all working. There's no crashes. It's doing what we thought it would do. Uh, what I need is some logic here that stop, stops me from adding uh, that third element. So well, how can I do that? Well, 
the uh, there's methods in the array list. There's one called index of that tells me the index of the first occurrence of the specified element in this list. So if the index of element is um, and also um, if the uh, I can't bring that up. If the element is not in there, it's going to return minus one. Right, so returns or minus one if there is no such index. So if the object is not in the data, it's going to return minus one. So if the element is not in the data, then I can add it, right? Or I can also add it if the element is there but only one. So what does that mean? Well, and that's going to be tricky, right? I need to count. And if there's two, and the way I can do this is, you know, I can say int uh, first is the data dot index of element and last equals data dot last. There's also this other method, last index of, returns the index of the last occurrence of the element in the list. Uh, so I can get that. Huh. And uh, so now I have that, so I'll have to say if if the first one is minus one, then I can add it because that means there is no element. Or maybe if the first one equals the last one, right? So if the index of the first element equals the index of the last element, that means both the first element and the last element are really the same element because they are at the same position. Um, so what this is saying, basically it's saying if there is no element or there is one element, then we add it. Um, so then, and only then, do we add element to the data. Otherwise, we do nothing. So there's no else, right? And uh, let's go over here, run it, and uh, boom, it works. So we got, I got a three, and you see only two up here. I can add a fourth one, and uh, it still works. I can uh, move this one down here, and it still works. So there we go. We got that. Uh, it's a two set, and uh, hopefully if I add two eights, two eights get added, a third one, no. Uh, so I have a two set, I can add two sets. Uh, next thing I might want to do is remove two sets. So you see I didn't use uh, the T, was only used here. The rest is just standard Java programming. And uh, similarly, I can, uh, I can do a public void remove element right and that was probably just data dot remove oops not data dot remove the object right so I want to remove element and uh, run that well, let me delete the ts dot remove the number seven I run that and you see there's only one seven. So that's it, generic classes are pretty straightforward. All you need is this less than or equal sign. You can have also multiple types by just doing something like that. Now you can use the letter T and the letter E and then all the letter and the letter P. So that's how you have multiple types and then you can use these letters or variables anywhere in this file. Now remember, it's only on this file, uh, but anywhere in this file or in this class, you can use those uh, for whatever the, the user typed in.